Jason Whiteley reports. Attention all squad. Attention all squad. No other crimes have been more analyzed or scrutinized than what happened here a half century ago. It's been picked apart for decades, but the, but the tragedy of this is that no one has ever taken the due diligence of time to really put these pieces together until now. It's perhaps the strongest evidence yet that Lee Harvey Oswald murdered Dallas policeman J.D. Tippett. The wallet puts him definitively at the scene of the crime. The wallet. A persistent mystery. That right there is significant. One that Ferris Rookstool, a former FBI analyst and noted JFK historian, started studying two years ago. Sit down. This is Ron Ryland. Uh, we are, you can imagine the confusion that's going on in the city of Dallas today. Not the mysterious wallet first appeared on WFAA that afternoon. Uh, let's roll the film and we'll narrate it as we go. A Channel 8 photographer showed it and presumed it was Officer Tippett's. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that it is Oswald's wallet. If we move up... So Rookstool set out to prove it. This is a frame grab from Ron Ryland's uh, film footage. He compared the Channel 8 film to Oswald's wallet in the National Archives and then found a similar one to show us. Each has circular snaps, metal strips, and perhaps the biggest similarity, a zipper over the cash compartment. Different color and characteristics than Tippett's. You remember all those times that you seen him take that out of that pocket? This month, for the first time, his widow shared the policeman's wallet with us. Tippett's is black, has a different style snap, no metal bar like Oswald's, and no zipper. A half hour east of Birmingham, in Pell City, Alabama, is the only man alive today who saw Oswald's wallet at Tippett's murder. As I walked up, I knowingly stepped in a puddle of blood, which was Tippett's blood. I thought, oh God, what have I done? Bob Barrett spent 27 years as an FBI agent. Showed where Oswald was and what he was looking at. Here's the box he used to rest the gun on for the shot. And was sent to investigate the Tippett murder that day, where he recognized a Dallas police captain thumbing through a billfold. He said, uh, Bob, uh, you know all the cooks in town, all the hoodlums, et cetera. You ever heard of a, a Lee Harvey Oswald? And I said, no, I never have. He said, how about Alex Heidel? I said, no, I never had heard of him either. Why would they be asking me questions about Oswald and Heidel if it wasn't in that wallet? In fact, the first Dallas cop on the scene said he actually recovered the wallet. And this is the only... Um written account. Sergeant Kenneth Croy, a reserve officer, put it in writing on an 8x10 for Rookstool. First on the scene, recovered Oswald's wallet there too. But officially, Dallas police told a different story. Said they got it from Oswald himself after his arrest. Why? Barrett and Rookstool believe police made that up because too many officers handled the crucial piece of evidence. They said they took the wallet out of his pocket in the car. That's so much hogwash. Bob's in Alabama. Kenneth Croy is in Hamilton, Texas. They had no relationship with each other other than uh, the fate of history put them at the scene of a crime. Rookstool says both men Tippett's billfold and the WFAA film prove that Oswald's wallet was at the policeman's murder. And more than shell casings and eyewitness recollections, it is the first hard evidence placing Oswald there that day, significant in tying off a historical loose end and perfecting the record 50 years later. Jason Whiteley, Channel 8 News. Our coverage begins on News 8 Daybreak on Friday. We will carry the observance at Dealey Plaza at noon. And then at 1, we will air two hours of our historic coverage from November 22nd, 1963. It will also stream on WFAA.com.